Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 32 of my fitness database series. Building a database to track fitness, but you don't have to care about fitness. The real value is in all the techniques that I'm showing you, all kinds of cool stuff. And today we're going to do some programming logic. We're going to build a weight plate calculator. Now, you might not work out with weights. You might not need help calculating you know what plates to put on each side but this is a a fun programming experience experiment experience whatever you want to call it right um now i'll be the first to admit sometimes when i'm in the gym you know i got i got i'm listening to rush i got the music cranked i'm getting my groove on i'm lifting i get gym brain sometimes right i'm doing let's say a bench press i gotta put i don't know 135 pounds on the on the on the bar and now all of a sudden I can, I'm like drawing blanks. All right, we'll start with 245s. And then, uh, so this is a cool little utility that I figured I'd build so that you could say, okay, my target is 175 pounds. And then the system tells you, all right, you put this on each side, this on each side, this, and so on. And yeah, I know you can do this in your mind. You know, most people can at least. I, I can do it when I'm not working out and when I'm not drinking, but... <laughs> But it's a cool little programming exercise. That's the word I was looking for. It's a programming exercise. So we're going to do some loops and some record sets. And uh, it's going to be a little more difficult than just typing in a number. Because you might not own more than a couple of 45-pound plates. So we're going to keep track of how many you own, too. Right? Because I only have, like, a couple 5-pound plates. So I wouldn't want the system to say, okay, put six 5-pound plates on there. And a what? I don't have that many. Okay? All right. Let's get into it. Obviously, if you haven't watched parts one through 31, go watch those first. Uh, and yes, I know we're going a little out of order here. We haven't even started the workout stuff. We're still on the food stuff. But this was just as I was actually working out yesterday, I'm like, this would be a cool little side project. So we're going to we're going to throw this in now. I was planning on building this eventually when we get to the workout part of it. Um, so we're just doing, going a little out of order, but it's, it's a little different, fun, experimental kind of something fun. All right. All right. Here we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a table to store the weight plates that we have. Okay, so we'll do plate type ID. I, I was gonna put plate ID, but to me, if it's a plate table instead of a plate type table, that kind of says, you know, these are individual plates, like, you know, individual products, you'd have a barcode on that, you know, so plate type works better. That's our auto number. Uh, the plate weight, right, is a 45 pounder, 35 pounder. This will be a number. And I'm going to make this a double because I do have 2.5 pound plates. Sometimes if you have to add five pounds to like a barbell exercise, you want to put five pounds on the bar, you need two and a half pound plates to do two of them. Okay. Um, and then finally, the quantity owned. How many of these do you have? And that will be a long integer because you can't own half a plate. I mean, you could. You could saw it in half somehow. but I wouldn't want to use that plate then. Um, all right. Save it. Plate. Type T, primary key, yes. Let's throw some data in here. I'm gonna put my actual data in here, 45. Yes, I actually have 10 45 pound plates. It's a long story. Um, I, I've had a couple of different gym sets in my life and I, I, whenever I wanted to upgrade, I would sell the bench and the and the stuff like that, but I always kept my plates. So I got, I got a, a lot of 45 pounders. Uh, 35, I got four of those. 25, I got four of those. 10, I have four of those. Five pounders, I actually have eight of those bad boys. And 2.5 pound plates, I have four of them. All right, if you want to put other ones on there, if you got different stuff, you can put on there whatever you want. Okay, now let's stick this on the main menu for now. We might move it later because I might do like a whole workout sub menu and then probably move the food to a sub menu too. But for now, it's, it's okay sitting here. So we got the food stuff up top here. Our food list, our food groups, our meal list. Maybe we'll make this a little bit taller. All right, I'm going to put on here a box to put the weight on there and then a button to calculate the weights that we need. And we'll just, for now, we'll just put the results in the, uh, in the status box. All right, so form design, let's grab a text box, drop it here. This will be weight, where you type in the actual finished weight you're looking for. And this will be the box where we put the amount. And leave a little extra room because we got something special coming after that too. We'll get to that in a little bit. Maybe part two. We'll see. All right. So there's my box to put the weight in. Come here. 
And we're going to name this bad boy target weight. Target weight. And I'm going to put a default value in there of, let's say, something weird, like 100 pounds, so that we don't have to keep typing it in. All right, and let's stick a button down below it. I just copied and pasted the food groups button. And this will be calculate weight. Come on, I can't type today. Weight plates. All right. This will be my plate button, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we're going to right click on this guy, go to build event, bring up the code builder. Let me move this back down here. All righty, so in this button, in my plate button click, we are going to basically uh, call a function. We're going to call it plan plates or whatever you want to call it. I don't care that's gonna return a string that's gonna have the stuff in it, like I showed in the title slide, all right? This will all be a string right here that will just status out. So it'll say target 178 pounds, this plate, this plate, this plate, this plate, okay. So we'll dim S as a string, uh, status box equals blank. We're gonna blank the status box. It just looks better if it's just the only thing on there, instead of you could see all the previous results like the status box always does. And then uh, S equals plan plates, and we're gonna send into it our target weight. Target weight, I can't type today. And then we'll status S, and then we'll make it green. Okay, and then a beep, and that's it. All right, that's, that's the easy part. Now we gotta write plan plates. I'm gonna throw plan plates in my global module because I might later on um, want to use this in different places. I don't know where, but I just like to throw stuff like this in global module. <laughs> All right, so public function plan plates. We're taking in a target weight as a double, right? Because they might send you, you know, 15.5 or whatever, or like 12.5 would work if you're doing like a single exercise. Yes, we're going to get to breaking it in half because. Some exercises, you need to break the weight in half because like a barbell, you got weight on both sides. Some machines only take one stack of plates. Like I've got a leg extension and ham curl thing that you put on the end of your bench. That just takes one stack of plates. So you don't have to divide everything by two. So we're going to make that an option eventually. But right now, we're just going to focus on just one set of plates. And this will return a string just for your human consumption reading portion. Okay. We're gonna need to take that target weight and save it in a variable because what we're gonna basically do is we're gonna, we're gonna loop through the records in that table that we just created. And we're gonna read them in in reverse order because obviously you wanna start with the heaviest plates and work backwards, right? Use all your 45s. So if you're asking for 90 pounds, you use two 45s. If you're asking for 100 pounds, you're gonna use two 45s and you got 10 left, right? So now you need to use two fives if you're doing it double or 110. So we're going to need to take a, another weight, a copy of that weight, basically, and subtract from it as we take off weight. So we're going to make another variable. So dim uh, load weight, let's call it, as a uh, double. And this will be uh, how much weight we still need to, or we still have left. We still need to calculate or whatever. All right, and we'll start that off as load weight equals the target weight. And as we take weight off of it, we will then subtract from that, okay? Now we need to open our table sorted from the largest plates down, all right? So uh, uh, loop through table, start with largest weight plates, okay? So now we need our record set. So we need a re an RS, so dim RS as a record set. And then we've got set RS equals current DB dot open record set. What's it going to be? It's going to be select from plate type T. Um, we don't need a where here, just all, all the records. So order by plate weight. Come on. <laughs> Descending. 
Okay. So give me all the fields. There's only two of them. Really. You don't really need the ID. You can, if you're dealing with big giant record sets and you only need one or two fields and there's a, you know, 30 fields in the table, you will save a little time if you only request the fields you need. You know, if you're dealing with 500,000 records over the internet, blah, 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 just request those fields. But for small databases like this, I always use the star because it'll save you a headache later when you go to request a field in the middle of the record set loop and you didn't put it in the SQL statement and you can't figure out why it's not working and then you realize, oh, you didn't use the star. So unless, until I get to the optimize phase of my database building, I just always put the star in there, right? Unless I know ahead of time this is going to be a giant record set, then I worry about it. There's, there's proper database theory, and then there's 30 years of experience building actual databases, learning what you really should and should not do. And I know I've, I've lost a lot of sleep over problems caused by not using that star. All right, and that's where we're going to end it for today, folks. That's your tech help video for today. We'll pick the rest of this up on Monday. And I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.